Okay, hi, we're back. Uh, it's part five to um, our journey to the promised land. Okay, so we saw last segment that Jericho was uh, symbolic of the city of palm trees, and palm trees is symbolic of victory. So while while they were in in Jericho, they camped out at Gilgal, and Gilgal is uh, the prime root meaning to Gilgal is to trust, seek, commit, to build, repair, set up, and make. And now they have come to a place where they have discovered the victory of overcoming the flesh, of dying to self, and again we're applying this to our walks and to our lives. So if we want to look at it that way, we say that we have now uh, come through this journey of experiencing Christ and again I want to say we never leave that experience because it's, I'm talking when I say we experience Christ and we we journey on from there we don't actually move away from him we he's always with us with us because uh, when we ask him to come into our heart and we live for him and lay our lives down for him he will never leave us nor forsake us amen okay so they we've we've journeyed from that we've gone to the Jordan to a place of dying to self which has brought us to Jericho and we are now camping out in a place at Gilgal, which is a place of trusting God. It's a place of seeking God, a place of commitment, a place where we are built up. And actually, it's a place a, a place where we are in a time of repairing also, because God is setting up and making us into the city of God. Glory to God. Okay, so this is where we get the victory. We get the victory in in um, Jericho, in that place of trusting him, seeking him, and allowing him to mold us and form us into his son. So let's look at some scripture on um, that place, Gilgal, which, like I said, means to trust, seek, commit, and to build and repair. First of all, let's look at the word trust. Well, we can't continue on in this journey if we do not trust our Lord. Amen. So if we look at Psalms 7 1 says, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. That is a cry of David's heart, and it's it's laced throughout the, the book of Psalms. You you will see that many times David um, is crying out to God about his trust and, and his hope in him and so forth. So we cannot continue on from Gilgal into the promised land unless we trust him. Amen. And let's look at one more. Psalm 37.5 says, actually we'll start at Psalm 37.3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So thou shalt dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Well, where were they heading? To the, to the promised land, a land with milk and honey, right? So God is saying, to you today to trust in the Lord and do good and so shall you dwell in that land also that land that is full of truth that land that is full of increase and blessing amen okay delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires on thy heart glory to God commit thy way unto the Lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass are there desires in your heart that that you have had there for a, a season and you have not maybe seen any of them come to the, the full manifestation. Well, God has a pattern. God has an order. And I believe that God requires things of us so that he can bring about those desires. Actually, I believe a lot of the desires that are within our heart have been put there by him as long as they are uh, godly and uh, not um, to consume lusts upon ourselves. Uh, or that we uh, answer to our idols, right? Or our lust is towards our idols of our heart. But um, that God has put those desires there and he will bring them about to pass as you journey through this, um, this course of life. Okay, so let's look also at um, to seek God. Psalm 69.32 says, The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live and seek God. Your heart shall live that seek God. So if you seek God, you will live and not die. And I think that means when you live in God, there's a life in the natural that when we experience God and we walk that walk, we live a life of joyfulness, a life of peace, 
He gives us a peace that passes all understanding, a, a peace that the world cannot understand or even know. If they don't experience Christ or they don't know Christ, how can they know his peace? Amen? So that is a promise to us if we seek him. Psalm 105, verses 3 to 4 says, um, Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Rejoice in the Lord if you are a seeker. That is your reward, to, to have a heart full of rejoicing. Because when we seek him, it becomes so um, contagious that when you encourage other people, when God has given you um, revelation and he's given you insight into his heart and into his nature, um, other people get stirred up, amen? And, and that's what I'm hope I'm, I hope I'm doing in, this, in these uh, teachings, and I am stirring you up to know him more, not to look at me, not to look at um, what I'm wearing or, you know, anything, but look at the heart of God in these messages. Look at what he wants for you. He wants to bring you into that Canaan land. Glory to God. It's an exciting, exciting message. Okay, so look at the word commit. He wants us to be committed. And if we go to Psalm 37, um, we will see Psalm 37, verse 5. I think I read that already. Yes, I did. So let's look at Proverbs 16, 3. He is longing for a church that will be committed, that will seek him, that will trust in him and not be moved by trials and tribulations, will not be moved by the things that the flesh longs for, but by a people full of victory and power. Amen. So Psalm 6, uh, sorry, Proverbs 16, 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Are you having a thought problem? Is, is there problems going on in your in your stinking thinking and you just don't know how to cast it down well God says if you commit your works unto the Lord your thoughts will be established your thoughts will be pure your thoughts will be strong and they will rest on a foundation of truth and honesty which is what God is so put yourself to work and I and I don't mean by works will get you saved but you know what I mean put yourself to work by studying his word praying seeking committing Giving yourself 100% to him. Trusting in him. Okay, let's look at the word build. Because in this place of Gilgal, there's a building that takes place in, in the people of God. The builder and maker is God. Glory to God. Acts 20, verse 32 says, Therefore watch and remain, that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night, and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Well, if you noticed in that in that story, the people sanctified themselves. Joshua ordered them to sanctify themselves, and because they were ready to walk into the promised land, but of course they had to go through Jericho and Gilgal. And that is what God is doing. He's building us up for an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. So he will build you up. Just keep your eyes set upon him. Okay, he is also the repairer. Psalm, uh, Isaiah 61, verse um, 4, And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the des desolations of many generations. But if you look at the beginning of that, that chapter, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach, Good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison of them that are bound. Are you called to set the captives free? Is the spirit of the living God resting upon you? Has he anointed you with power and might? Glory to God. I know he has me. And therefore you are being built up to, uh, to build up the waste places. Glory to God. There are ruins in the body of Christ. And God is looking for repairers of those ruined walls. And that is a returning and a restoring of foundations back into the house of God. Amen. We'll see you in the next segment. Um, I'm going to end in segment uh, six, I believe. So we'll see you then. God bless.